All right, folks, I'm trying to figure out a good way to bridge the gap between the 70s rinker engine pull and putting that engine into my 1968 East 68 Starcraft Islander. Uh, I don't know what a good transition, I don't know what a good title is. It's going to be part four. This one will be part four. Maybe I'll call it the transition. I don't know. But what I wanted to introduce you to is a video I did about two years ago on this boat and how I acquired this 19. This is a recap, you know, refresher, if you will, on this blue, two tone blue boat. I'm not going to go ahead and pull the cover off right now until I'm ready to work on it because it's a hassle to pull on and put off. And I got, you know, my skeleton structure to hold the to hold the cover up so water doesn't sag it, you know, so you don't end up with something like this. Yeah. So, anyway, what you're going to see next is something I recorded about two years ago and describing how I came about this boat, some, a few things about this boat. And uh, currently the engine does run. And another video after this video, we're going to fire it up. You know, we got, we, we're pulling some stuff off the other boat. We're going to fire this one up, make sure it still runs well, and then move forward from there. And as you can see, the umbrella is doing a real good job of casting shade right over where I'd be working right now if I was in that boat, which is awesome because it is in the middle of the day. But yeah, that's a, this is the transition video. The next things you're going to see after this is going to not be named Rinker. It's going to be named 1968 Starcraft Islander and uh, the things we're going to do to it. You know, we're going to put that 165 horse inline six into that boat and the steps I'm going to have to take to do it. And uh, it's not complicated, but it is going to take some wrenching, some crawling in and out and some, uh, you know, can't miss anything. Because if you miss anything, you're out in the water, something goes wrong, you're stranded. Now, the advantage I have with this boat is I am going to put a kicker motor. I'm going to do a, a nice transom mount on the back with a kicker motor on one side in order to have two means of propulsion on this boat that are not my paddle. Because to paddle a 22 plus foot boat on even a slightly windy day or even a non-windy day is a Herculean effort. So I want to be able to have a situation where I could fire up the kicker motor and get me safely to shore or to a dock. That's all. Enjoy the rest of the video. We'll be back at the end. Hi there, folks, and welcome to another episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. We're going to embark on working on this boat a little more. Uh, last year, I think there's a video. I'll be putting this all together as the 1968 StarCraft Holiday is what you can search for. But I will have all these, all these videos that pertain to this boat grouped. So hopefully you can watch them all in series or however you want to watch them. This is a 22 and a half foot long boat. It's got a cuddy cabin up front. You go back and watch some of my earlier videos back last year, you'll see a little bit about the boat when I got it and a little bit about the boat when I got it running. But uh, we're going to pick up where we left off last year because I've got a few other irons out of the fire where I can go back and play with this a little more. The good news is it's got a solid engine in it. Just like the green machine we just finished up here for a buddy of mine, the green machine had a great solid motor. This has the same exact motor, runs just as well as that one does. So I'm really excited to get this one on the water. What this one did have is a locked up out drive. The Mercruiser outdrive was locked up solid. And what's funny, I'll go back and recap a little bit. When I bought the boat from the guy, he goes, yeah, we're out in the lake, we're out in the lake. And it just, it, it needs a, it just, I pulled the outdrive off because it needed a exhaust boot. It had a cut in it. So buyer beware, right? But I knew what I was getting into because I was after this part of it. I can get a motor, I can get an outdrive, I can buy another whole boat for $400, it's the one, I just saw one this past week. I actually put an offer on the guy. He was selling a boat, motor, and trailer. Motor ran, outdrive worked for $400. That's where you wanna buy your parts for something like this. You wanna go buy another boat and strip it down and bring this one back around. Uh, so I took the gear cap off, off the top gear cap. There's four bolts on top. 
and I went to take it loose thinking these Phillips screws are gonna be tight. You know, I was gonna have to impact them. They were pretty much finger loose. Somebody had already opened that up and what had happened, the reason he pulled that out drive off, you know, and let it sit is because it was locked up tight. It won't move, it won't do nothing. It, it doesn't even have any back and forth in play. It's just, it's like you welded everything in sight together. One of these days I'll tear that thing completely apart and just see what's going on in there. Just out of curiosity, if nothing else, on. Oh, let's, let's learn how they're assembled, you know? I haven't pulled one of those completely apart. Good news is I had other boats that I parted out and I've got another Mer Cruiser outdrive that'll go right on here. And it seems to be freed up and moving like it should, but we're gonna have to spend some time and some detail. And that's what this video is all about, is rehabbing. I know, I'm not getting, don't, don't, don't. I'm not gonna completely rebuild it. I am gonna check it for some leaks. I'm gonna check the oil as it comes out to see how clean the oil is. I'm going to put a new water pump in. Uh, a couple other components I want you to, I'm, I'm going to go in this whole thing, what I'm going to do with this boat to get it underwater. I'm going to go in some extraordinarily painful detail. So if you want to learn something about your Merc Cruiser outdrive and how to replace the bellows and how to replace the details, crazy details on how to do it. I learned a lot on the green boat. I'm going to share it with you on the blue boat. And if you got any questions on how to do it, this is the right video to be in. Uh, the interior of this boat is black. Now I do have a bimini top, but that black interior ain't gonna last long in a boat on the water in the sun. I don't know who decided that was an awesome idea. Yeah, it looks cool. Probably in a showroom, it's fantastic in black against this shade of blue, but Put your butt down on a black seat out in the sun and let's see how fantastic it looks then. You're gonna look like a freaking baboon when you're done. You know what I'm talking about. So let's go back here and look at the back of the boat real quick. I'm gonna show you some stuff there. Now I know this is in the shade and you can't see a lot of detail, but you have to go verbally. I'm gonna show you how to get this piece off. How to take this off so you can actually remove this part. We're gonna remove this part that has a decent amount of play in it. Um, you look through here where the drive shaft goes through, there's supposed to be a boot in here. There is no boot whatsoever. And that bearing in there, I'm guessing is, yep, dry as a popcorn fart. And the uh, rest of it looks like it's in pretty okay shape. Um, we'll find out how the cables, shift cables and stuff look when we start playing with it when I get this apart and see how things, how freely things move. But we got plenty of places to grease things up. This side to side play here, that's a bit concerning. But uh, I think I'm going to pull this off first, get at some stuff behind it, and then uh, I might look at. I might look at some of this and see, see what these uh, gimbal bearings and stuff are like to get at. Might be, might be a lot. Might be a little. We might take this whole thing all the way off. Part of me, part of me is really wanting to take it all the way off, and I want to seal up behind it because the thing I just experienced with the green machine is this thing leaked like a sieve, and I'll tell you right now. I really doubt that this one's very watertight at all. But yeah, we're gonna rip this apart. But first, let's go in and let's get busy on the outdrive, which is what you should, should service on a semi-regular basis. And I'll give you an idea of how often I would do it. Guys, use your own judgment from there. Now for pretty much the rest of this portion of the video, this is as far away as we're gonna be from this thing. I'm gonna get you guys inside here and up tight to show you what I'm doing. And I don't want you to miss any details. There's a few things that are wrong with this picture and I want you to be aware of it. Uh, and I want, you to, I want you to just see in detail because a lot of times the doing of it yourself is the seeing somebody else do it 
which gives you confidence that you can do it, especially if you have a couple of the right tools and the right mental attitude, the can-do attitude, right? Of course. In this episode, we're going to go and we're going to split this apart, get after the water pump. Once it's split apart and we're after the water pump, I'm going to show you something in here with the shifter. There's something, uh, something somebody did wrong here with the shifter. This came off another boat and another engine. I think it might be this engine behind me, actually. Uh, and then we're going to replace, this is called, a, it's got two U-joints. We've got new U-joints here made by uh, SKF. We're going to put brand new U-joints in here because I learned my lesson, and I shouldn't say lesson so much, but, you know, the only time these get greased is when you pull this off. Most people only pull this off when you have a little bit of an issue. And by the time you have an issue, much too late. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is we'll, re we'll pull them apart. And I'm going to show you what they look, in look like inside. Now, some of them, the one we did on the green machine, did not have a serviceable U-joint. And what I mean by serviceable, you couldn't grease it. This one has a grease zerk on it there and there. So this is a greasable, serviceable joint. But, and it feels no in play, no loss motion, feels good and tight. But you can't take that to the bank because you don't know how long this has been sitting without grease. Uh, if it was exposed to water, how much water and what's inside. And the first time you put a load on it, and believe you me, these boats put 120 horsepower through this gearbox and through a prop and puts a heck of a load. I've described the load that is on these engines, these little four-cylinder engines or any outboard, inboard outboard engine. And it's also true for outboards as well. People go, you know, they don't have to be that tough. Yes, they do. Because your car, picture your regular family car, the Wagon Queen family truckster. Now put a 1,600 pound, 2,200 pound boat behind it. And now pull it up on a 30 degree grade. It's just this is an example giving you an idea of what it's like. 30 degree grade and then put your foot to the floor. Gas pedal to the floor. Give her the onions. And then do that until you decide to let off the gas because you want to stop. That's the life a boat out driving a boat motor lives. It's under constant pressure. There is no coasting in the boat world unless you're whitewater rifter, river rafting, and you're paddling, and you're going with the river. Boats, when you're skiing, when you're boating, when you're going to your destination, it's under a load, and most everybody don't go to their destination half throttle. They're not like, oh, I just want to do 15 miles an hour. No, if it does 31.55, if it does 31.285 miles an hour, you're going to give it all 38.825 miles an hour. That's all there is to it. But that puts a load, a constant load under these things. So that's why you want to service them often. You want to, you want to change the gear oil. You know, my boat, if I go out 10 times, 15 times, 20 times, after about 20 times, drain the oil in your gearbox. Put some fresh in there. I run AMS oil, and I'll go over it some more later, but AMS oil, marine grade, 75W90, outboard gear lube because it can take up to 10% water contamination and still maintain all of its lubricity properties. That's important to me. These are expensive. Go look online for this little setup right here. Yes, you can get this brand new for $2,700. Yeah, that's two comma seven zero zero point zero zero dollars and your boat that this particular age boat type thing like this is in you're lucky if it's worth seven hundred and fifty dollars for that boat the starcraft you've seen in my videos recently the the 76 1976 i call fat fishing i paid six hundred fifty dollars for that boat four years ago I just, and I paid a little bit more than that for a green boat. But then I, that's when you start putting some more money into it. Once you found out you got a good engine, I know I'm going on here, but this is important. 
Now, all you people that know boats and been around boats, this is boring the crap out of you. Go up and get yourself a snack and maybe a cold drink of your choosings and come back here in a minute. But leave it playing. I need the play time. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. So it's so important to maintenance these things, to protect your investment, because I've... I, I always, first thing I do when I get a boat is I make sure it can run. Will the engine run? First two things I look for, a, hull, a solid hull, a good hull that ain't all beat to crap, doesn't have any holes in it, and then an engine that can run. I can put everything else around this thing for a reasonable, I can find another trailer, I can find wheel bearings and tires, I can find, you know, another out drive. Just like in this case, I can find another outdrive off another $400 boat, which is a fraction. Think about how many $400 boats you can buy for $2,700. It's around six. Check my math. It's around six point something. And you're bound to have find one of these or two of these or three of these that are good. The nice thing is you find two or three and you have spares for a lot less money. And it's easy to check these things out too. You know, if you go down there and you go in the boat and you shift the shift lever and you move it, it sounds clean and clear and you put it in the gear and it locks and you put it in reverse and it locks, that's half the battle, right? The other half, if they'll let you do it, is, hey, do you mind if I replace the oil right here and now? Would you let me drain the oil so I can take a look at what's inside? And if they let you do that, do it. Take your screwdriver with you. Take your little oil pump that we're going to use on here and drain it and then refill it for them. It might be the best $15 you spend because if it comes out with nothing but water and rust and water blended oil, run away. Run away because... You might say, Michael, but you can just put new seals in it. You can, no doubt. But how long did it run that way? How much damage is done that you're going to be working with? Okay. As I think of more stuff, I'll bring up more stuff. But let's just jump in here. We're going to, I think the first thing I'm going to do is take this little whaley tail off. Because on this boat, I don't want it. I don't need it, don't want it. Um, it's a 22 and a half foot boat bow rise isn't going to be a huge problem. The length of the boat has got a lot of leverage over the back end of the boat. It's going to, that boat's so big and light right now that it's practically sitting on plane, sitting in the water. So it's just going to go, uh, it's going to go up a little bit and go. It's my anticipation. Now you might ask me, where'd the prop go? Well, <laughs> the prop's on my buddy's boat because his boat prop had been it hit a few things. It hit a lot of things. And he needed a better prop, and this one fit. It was a 19-pitch prop, and that's what I'm going to put right back on. I'm not sure whether I'm going to put a 19. I think I'm going to go with a 17 aluminum on this StarCraft because I'm not looking for crazy speed. I still probably hit 25 to 30 miles an hour with it, no problem. But I wanted to get up and out of the water quicker. I wanted to be able to get out of its own way quicker. So, and like I've had experience with my 17 pitch stainless on my other StarCraft. I like how it performs. It jumps it up on the plane quick. So we're going to go there. Let's jump in and pull this whale tail off. Now I see this a lot. People put things together and they use whatever came with it possibly. I'm guarantee you that didn't come with it because that's a rusty bolt. And most of this stuff, hardware like this comes with stainless. So we'll see if we can ugga dugga it off of here. Gotta love the ugga dug, don't you? Well, that one had a hex bolt on both sides. This one has a Phillips on the bottom with a 7 16 on the top. Oh, that came right off. I thought it was gonna give me some resistance. Lovely. Must be living right. That came apart pretty easy. Um,
Well, the good news is there's no cracking, no breakage, no anything weird going on here. Um, whoever did this did an okay job drilling, didn't mess anything up. Didn't, wasn't using that whale tail to cover any, any damage up. And uh, this thing's actually in pretty good shape. This has got some numbers on the back. It says 587-4178. Then it's got a one, and it looks like a point, and a space, and a 98R. I find that fascinating, and I'm going to tell you why. Now, I'm looking at my phone here going, this is the bellows kit I bought for the 1967, which should be uh, the same for the 1968. Now, this says Mercruiser, Mercruiser Alpha 1 Gen 1. And I don't know if that's what the 1 is for here. Uh, Gen 1, Alpha 1 Gen 1, whoops, bait, cancel. Uh, R, there's an R in here, MR, um, and number 1 Stern Drives from 1973 to 1990. Transom Bellows Repair Seal Kit. Now something I'll show you between some older ones and newer ones here while I'm on that subject. subject. The reason I find that fascinating is because this is the one I bought according to the year and whatever that this is supposed to fit. Well, this is cool, cool because this fits, this is on the gimbal housing, this fits the gimbal on this side but does not fit the motor side. As you can see, that is quite a bit smaller than that. This kit that I'm putting out here for you, and I'll have a link in the description below if you're doing this type of job. This kit has this particular same size on both ends, which is what this requires. As you can see, not so much same size on both ends. Just thought I'd make you aware of that. Um, I ordered this one wrong. Now, I kept it. They're not cheap, but they're not crazy expensive, but I just know that I'm gonna run into a boat that needs this. So I'm gonna have it, have it on hand. Now, if you're looking for that guy that can tell you the what years everything fits, that's not me. But I'm gonna show you what works on what I'm working on. That's how I'm gonna roll. Now, I'm not that guy that's gonna know how, what year everything fits, what years, what range of years fits this particular part and that particular part. I'm not that guy if that's what you're looking for. But I will share my part numbers and I will share my information on the stuff I'm working on. I'm that guy. Now we're getting ready to drain the oil on this and I'm gonna show you two plugs that you need to worry with. This is the oil vent. This is what you will pull out when you put your oil back in. You will not fill through this hole if you fill it up through this hole, there's a good chance you're going to make a mistake that's going to cost you your outdrive, and I'll tell you why. This right here will be the second plug that you'll worry about when you're doing your oil. And the reason I say that, this is where you will drain it. Also, this is where you will fill it. And you're saying, Michael, you can't fill from the bottom up. Yes, you can. you got to buy a pump. And if you fill it from the top, I'll show you something when I split this thing apart. When you fill it from the top, or try to fill it from the top, you're going to make a mistake. Now, I highly encourage, make sure you use a lar the largest good screwdriver you got to back this out. Now, what I'm looking for when this comes out is I'm looking for no water. Oil floats on top of water. Water would be on the bottom of this gearbox. And if I get a lot of water, chances are this gearbox is absolutely toast. What you want to see is what you just saw there. Absolute nothing but, even if it's black, disgusting oil, smells like gear oil, it is still better than any amount of water in there, period. Well, there came a little water. That's not good. There's a little water sitting in there. Well, this is a very interesting combination of oil and I'm seeing a little bit of water coming out intermittently with the oil. Usually water comes out and then oil. This one's got me a little puzzled. Could it be condensation? The oil actually feels, the gear oil actually feels really, it's dark, but it feels good. Now I've had oil come out pure black on my other boat that I ran 200 miles on and it broke down the oil a little bit. 
This is very interesting. Well, there you have it, folks. As you saw in that video, there is uh, the outdrive on that particular boat was completely trashed. You know, not only being locked up, it also had the top cap that was loose. I pulled that off. It's full of rust in there. And then when I drained the oil, as you saw, it came out like, oh, it might be okay, but it's still locked up. But then water came out. So, you know, that thing needs a complete rebuild. And that can be very expensive. Uh, so that's why you see now that the thing I've been working on with that 70s rinker boat is uh, it has low hours. Uh, you can tell by the paint. You can tell by the condition of the gimbal here behind me. There is uh, very little play in there. There's actually no play. There's no lost motion in that at all as far as the hinge points go. It's very tight. As you can see on the back of the old, uh, the old uh, 68 there, that thing has got a lot of wear and tear on it. It, it probably was never greased from day one, uh, would be my guess. And this one, you could tell when I, I pulled a lot of grease out of here, this thing is a greasy mess, which is a good thing to see, which means somebody actually took care of it and shot it with grease every now and then. And that's probably what helped it survive and, and, and not wear as bad as well. Uh, but the nice thing is, even though the outdrive looks a little tough, sun faded and whatnot, it doesn't mean it's bad. Uh, it has the same amount of hours, more most likely that the actual engine has on it uh covered versus uncovered big difference right i preach I preach on that a lot so we're gonna go through and do a water pump upper seal uh new gaskets and whole nine thing nine yards on the on the upper part of that one before it goes back on i think that's a low hour word. i thought about asking sci marine products if they could uh provide me one but i don't think i need to do that i think i'm going to use that one and if something goes south on it, then, I'll, then I might do something different. But that's the one that matches up with the engine that was in it and everything I'm putting together uh, should go together flawlessly. I'm going to also repair the U-joints in it and do things. I'm, I'm looking, not looking at the camera. I should be looking. I'm looking at the thing while I'm talking. But uh, that's what's going to be happening. The, uh, somebody else also asked me about this. You know, I've been, the video I just dropped this past Friday uh ask about the isn't that 15 horse something you just did recently the answer is no it's not uh that one is a, the one i did recently i call the johnson 99 with a big secret it's, it's i would call it the most famous outboard on youtube it has over half a million views just on that outboard in that series in total and uh but the uh but this one here is a 77 that was a 1988 this is a 1980 or 77 and it's one that I happened to buy because somebody's getting rid of it, didn't run, whatnot. I'm like, okay. And typically, I won't pay any more than I would pay for them if they don't run, if they were just a parts motor. At that point in life, they're, that's what they are. Then I bring them, home, bring them home, we'll assess them, see what's going on. That one actually had good compression. And as you saw in the last Friday's video, it, uh, and I'm dating this by saying last Friday because you're watching this on Sunday. It's... Uh, it's got something funky going on, but it, the cool part is it has a 15 horse carb on it. The other thing it doesn't have, which in 1977, I don't believe they did do, is they put like a 12,000 shim behind the restrictor plate to hold the restrictor plate a little further back. Uh, so it allows the reed valves to flex a little more. When you get more flex, more fuel comes in, more air comes in, more power, more RPMs, more everything. But that one's got a little funky something going on. So that is, a, to answer the question that somebody left in a comment, that is a different outboard. It is 11 years older, but still in actually really good shape. Other than the coils are just rusty, like they've been drugged down, you know, 48 miles of Iowa salt roads in the wintertime. They look like a rusted out Chevy pickup. Anyway, we're going we're gonna to play around with that. One of the first things I'm going to try to do is the coils seem to be obviously something weird there. Um, it could be a power pack issue. It could be a fuel delivery issue. I think I eliminated the, the fact that it might be a fuel delivery issue when I was running it with the choke on, choke off, choke on, choke off. It's the, it'll run for a long time just on what's in the carb doing that. So there's something internal to the carburetor that's causing it. And that's that plastic carburetor. I'm going to put the original steel carburetor back on it, steel cast aluminum carburetor back on it and uh, see if it does the exact same thing. If it does, then then I know it's not necessarily carburation. If two carburetors that I think are good carburetors do the exact same thing, it could be a timing issue. It could be things heat up and, or the, and I, I would lean toward timing more than anything. If it wasn't the carburetor, 
just for the simple fact that I can push the thing in, push it out, and it runs. I can rev it up. The crazy part is I can rev it up pretty high without advancing the timing. So maybe the timing is off, the timing's too advanced, and it doesn't like to run in the condition it's in. And when you rev it up, put it in gear and run it up, you know, wide open, uh, the timing is where it's supposed to be for a wide open throttle situation. I don't know. And that there again, that's all electronically timed, you know, so to speak. It's, you know, you're moving it, you're moving the thing, but it's also electronically, electronic ignition is I guess is what I'm trying to say. All right, I know this is a much different video than I normally do uh, because I normally am working on something, showing you something, teaching something, but I didn't know a good way to transition from the Rinker to the StarCraft. So from now on, I think I'm just going to go, you know, this is 1968 StarCraft Islander um, with a retrofit, refit, install, you know, inline, so inline swap. I'm not sure. As, you know, as YouTubers, we try to think of catchy names that catches people's eyes and gets people to watch stuff. But, you know, I'm not, I'm not huge into clickbait. I like the title to be a lot of what's going on inside the video when possible. Except for this one I have out there that's a, you know, a Black Panther takes on, or yeah, takes on a white-tailed deer type thing. And it's just me hunting a few years back and there was a black cat running around the backyard and a, and a deer... We're kind of checking each other out. Yeah, that was clickbait for sure. But I did that once, and I'm like, eh, that didn't feel good. So I try not to do that. So, now, Johnson 99 with a big secret. This 77 here with a finding something. I found something. The big secret on that one wasn't a big secret, but it was secret enough uh, type thing. Well, enough rambling. I got some more work to do around here. I got a lot of effort to put in a lot of things to keep videos coming for you guys. And we'll see you on the next video. This is Michael saying, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. And I hope the weather cools off here pretty soon. Because that humidity being 60 plus outside when it's 85 degrees doesn't seem bad. But when you can't, when you sweat and it doesn't evaporate, your body, you know, can't cool uh, how it's designed to cool. That's all there is to it. We'll see you on the next video. I'm out of here. Treat each other kind. Be good to one another. And I'll see you real soon. All right, bye.